Gary Becker was the first to consider family as a topic for economists. 50 years ago, it was pretty clear for, all, for everyone, including economists, that family was a topic for sociologists, for anthropologists, for psychologists, whatever, everything but economists. Uh, Becker came and said, no, the, the toolbox of economists, the concept, the, the, the approaches can be fruitfully used to family economics. What does uh, family economics do? We ask ourselves uh, what exactly is going on within the family, in particular issues like inequality, investment in children, investment in health, investment in education. All this was driven by uh, things that take place within the family. One very striking fact over the last three or four decades is the huge increase in female education. That's true in basically uh, all developed countries and it's also true in a, in a large number of developing countries. Nowadays, in the UK, in the US, in France, in basically most developed countries, women are more educated than men. If you look at the situation uh, 50 or even 30 years ago, it was completely different. So what we economists call the returns to education and to, especially to higher education have been going on a lot. What this means is that when people invest in education, in human capital, as we say, uh, the return to this investment are much higher now than they used to be 30 years ago. So you would expect people to invest more. And actually we do see that for women. The proportion of women with college plus degree in the US has moved tremendously from something like less than 4% to 11 or 12% within 30 years. It's very rare to see changes of this magnitude in history. For many, if anything, you see a slight decrease. So how come you see men and women faced with exactly the same incentives and reacting in a completely different way. But there is another aspect which has been completely underestimated by economic analysis to a large extent, except so a few people like Becker. And this is what's going on on what we call the marriage market. So the idea here is that one of the motivation for investment in human capital is that your marital prospects are completely different if you have a higher education. Uh, your probability of getting married, the, the education income uh, uh, of, the, of your potential spouse is sensitive to your own investment. I had the privilege of discussing this with a woman that I admired a lot, who uh, unfortunately passed away a few months ago, uh, Bobby Solo, she was the wife of Bob Solo, who is a, a Nobel laureate in economics. And in my time, she says, uh, it was okay to be a nurse because a nurse had good chances of marrying a surgeon. Now, if you're a nurse, forget about marrying a surgeon because there is way too much competition from female surgeon. In other words, on the marital market, uh, in a situation like 30, 35, 40 years ago, in which women on average were much less educated than men, the fact of, of having an, a good education, but not a top one, was not too much of a handicap in this prospect of marrying up. Uh, now it's much more difficult. And for men, if, if anything, it's the opposite. Now, this is in the data big time, uh, and that could be one possible explanation. In other words, when we think about the decision to acquire a higher education, we should not concentrate exclusively on the impact on future wages, because that's part of the story, but the general story is much more complex. In particular, this kind of reality we have in which women are becoming much more educated. The obvious consequence I expect would be that there will be a shift of power within the household uh, from, from the husband to the wife, to a large extent. There are structural factors which are crucially important in, in growth, and those are education, innovation, investment, risk-taking, things like this. And what we start realizing is that if we want to understand these aspects, it's more and more crucial to understand what's going in within the family. Just to take one example, uh, investment in human capital for children, which is important in developed countries, but which is absolutely crucial in developing countries, that has a lot to do with the allocation of resources between men and women. If we don't understand what the drivers of this, those kind of differences, we miss a large and possibly a crucial part of the story.